Hi all and welcome back to Professor True Love's Concepts for Nurses series and I am Professor Terry True Love. And in this episode, part of the Cardiac Concepts series, we will be looking at impulses that originate from the AV node, that is, Junctional Rhythms Part 1. Sources for this episode include Cone's Flip and C ECG, 4th edition. What exactly are junctional rhythms? Junctional arrhythmias originate in the atrioventricular or AV junction. Remember, this is the area around the AV node and the bundle of hiss. This occurs when the sinoatrial SA node is suppressed and fails to conduct impulses, or when there is a block that occurs in conduction. In that case, electrical impulses may then be initiated by pacemaker cells in the AV junction secondary to the property of automaticity. Normally, the job of the AV node is to slow impulse transmission from the atria to the ventricles. Remember that this gives the atria time to contract and pump as much blood as they can into the ventricles before contraction of those ventricles. But also remember that the heart has backup fail-safe measures in case of pacemaker failure. Normally, the SA node is the pacemaker, and it sends impulses to the heart at 60 to 100 beats per minute. If that fails, the AV node can take over with a rate of between 40 and 60 beats per minute, and if those two fail, there's a ventricular rate available, and that usually beats the heart at 20 to 40 times per minute. If the AV node is now operating as the pacemaker, there's going to be some changes on the monitor that you should note. Since the AV junction is located in the lower part of the right atrium near the tricuspid valve, impulses from this area, if they start in that area, are going to be depolarized in an abnormal way. From a positive lead perspective, that means that some of the impulses going towards the atrio will actually be heading away from that lead and therefore might look different than a sinus rhythm beat. The impulse moves upward and causes backward or even retrograde depolarization. And this means that the P wave may be inverted in positive leads, although your QRS complex should look normal if there is not an AV block accompanying this. So find the P wave. When the pacemaker fires in the AV junction, the impulse may reach the atria or the ventricles first. Therefore, the inverted P wave and the following QRS complex won't have a consistent relationship. Look at this strip. There is no P wave in that rhythm strip. All of the impulses are being generated by the AV junction. You do have to be careful because some atrial arrhythmias are mistaken for junctional arrhythmias because those impulses may be generated so low in the atria, that is, so close to the junction, that they also cause retrograde depolarization and inverted P waves. However, those impulses are going to have a normal PRI. So look at the PR interval. This will help you to determine whether this arrhythmia is atrial in origin or junctional in origin. Remember that an arrhythmia with an inverted P wave before the QRS complex and a normal PRI actually originated in the atria. On the other hand, an arrhythmia with a PR interval of less than 0.12 seconds originated in the AV junction. Let's look at one of those rhythms, in this case, a PJC, or a premature junctional complex. This is a beat that occurs before a normal beat and causes an irregular rhythm. This impulse originates in the AV node, and it occurs when an irritable location within the AV junction acts as a pacemaker and fires either prematurely or out of sequence. The atria are deep polarized in retrograde fashion, causing an inverted P wave. However, because the impulses are going down the proper pathways, the ventricles are depolarized normally, and this nets us a narrow, normal-looking QRS complex. This is a positive view of a PJC. Note the lack of the P wave before the early QRS complex appears. There are many causes of PJCs, 
One of the most important and dangerous is digoxin toxicity. That is, blood levels of digoxin that are greater than 2.5 nanograms per milliliter. Other causes include excessive caffeine intake, an inferior wall myocardial infarction, rheumatic heart disease, valvular disease, hypoxia, heart failure, and swelling of the AV junction after heart surgery. Remember that although PJCs themselves aren't typically dangerous, you will need to monitor the patient carefully and assess them for other signs of intrinsic pacemaker failure. As you look at your rhythm strip, you should see that this appears on the rhythm strip as an early beat that causes an irregularity, while the rest of the strip may show regular atrial and ventricular rhythms. Look for inverted P waves in leads 2, 3, and AVF. Those are the positive leads. The P wave may fall before, during, or after the QRS complex. If it falls during the QRS complex, it will be hidden. And if it comes before the QRS complex, the PR interval will be less than 0.12 seconds. If it's greater than 0.12 seconds, the impulse has originated in the atria. Because the ventricles are usually depolarized normally, the QRS complex has a normal configuration and a normal duration of less than 0.12 seconds. Lastly, the T wave and the QT interval are usually normal. As you assess your patient, your patient may be asymptomatic or they may complain of palpitations or a feeling of quickening in the chest. As a nurse, you may be able to palpate an irregular pulse. If the PJCs are frequent enough, the patient may have hypotension from a transient decrease in cardiac output. If you find that your patient has no symptoms, continue to monitor and provide no interventions. Monitor for hemodynamic instability. Decrease the intake of substances that cause that irritability, and you should consider digoxin toxicity. Just like the PR interval in junctional rhythm, this episode was relatively short, but hang in there. Part two will cover a few more aspects of these junctional rhythms. In the meantime, I hope you learned a little bit. I hope you come back, and if you do, we'll see you then.